Hi okay, guys, so I feel inspired to do something crazy today. So, um, you know, I love Rust a lot and, you know, I, I like Python a lot and I kind of like .NET. So what if we just join these things together, join the forces? How about having a .NET code calling into Rust code via, for example, Python? Is it possible? Let's do this experiment. So there is this project PyDonet that I created a long time ago. And there is this, Py03. This is bindings for Rust, right? So we can call Rust functions from Python. So we can clearly use PyDonet to create some .NET class. And then we can use Py03 to create some um, call back in Roost and pass it into .NET. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to create such a callback. What this page says, um, this suggests to create virtual environment. And I'm actually going to do that because my Python 12 is in some directory. And this will get it added to the path. OK. So next thing I need to do is activate this environment. Okay, we activated MyPy 3.12. Okay, so let's check. This is Python 3.12. This is AMD 64 on Windows. Yeah, this is Mac. This is running on Parallels. This is Windows on ARM. And it's running on emulation of x86 64 bit. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> That's our Python. Now we need to install some modules. So do pip install. Let's start with my module. It's called .NET. Let's just do pip install.net. Voila, my module is installed. Now, let's check if it works. Let's import uh, .net simless worked. Can I do a list? I always check if I can do a list. Looks like it. Okay. So it worked. Now, let's do the other part of this madness. So this is the PyO3 project. And they say to do this, um, create a folder and install Maturin. OK, let's do that. Um, some folder. Example, good folder. And pip install Maturin. Let's see what Maturin will do for me. OK, it's installed. Ah, here we go. We need to do Maturin in it now. Okay, which one I want? I want Py03. Voila, Py03. Initialized project. I have this Visual Studio open here. There is my Py.net project there. Let's just add this new project here. I create that. No, not sure. I don't trust myself. <laughs> I, I suppose this is some Roost function we exposed to Python via Py03. So, hmm. let's see if that compiles, I suppose. Now we can do Maturin develop. All right, we're building something. What's cooking, Doug? We're cooking some rust. Rust chicken. <laughs> it's kind of similar to Python. I would actually argue that it's more of Scala. But out of all syntaxes, I actually love rust the most. It's my favorite syntax, if you ask me. Um, all right. Um, what do we have here? What's next? Can I, can I use that in Python? Can I do imports or something? I can, apparently. Um, so let, let's try this. Python. All right. Import example. Is this how it's called? It imported. OK. Does it have help? My Python then does have help. It does. Nice. <laughs> OK. It sums uh, as a string. Why is it as a string? We can sum some values. Should be three. It is three and it is a string. Yes, I am importing .NET. Look, I'm importing example and I'm importing .NET. I'm going to import seamless because my memory is poor and I don't remember where things are. And this actually tells me where things are. So I need to do this. Now I have link. Now let's create some list. 
So one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna just create numbers. And that's our list of unsigned integers, as you can see, the unsigned. This is nice. All right, uh, do I have numbers select? Oh, I don't. Why? Because I need to do import system link. I already loaded the assembly, but I need to import the link. Now I have extension method. Look at that. What does this extension method say? Let's run the help on it. It needs a numerable, which will be numbers, because it is extension of the source. The selector is a projection function, so it takes this part type and gives it this type. So, uh, yeah, this function returns a string. So let's 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 see. I want u in thirty two projected onto a string. Yes, it's possible, right? I can do that. Okay, let's see if I can use Rust function for this. I feel like it would be amazing. So, I just call it results, and I'm gonna say, uh, I could do lambda, but do I care of doing lambda? I don't feel like lambda is necessary. I can just say example dot the name of a function. At the end of the day, this should be Python function. It should just work for me, Py object. I just called the Rust function from .NET, just like that. <laughs> All right, I can do a list of results. Oh, that won't work because list will try to, to get the length and iterator doesn't have length. So what I can do is list comprehension. Okay, it didn't actually work because select is a lazy function, you know? It didn't actually evaluate this. What it did was it accepted it, but it didn't evaluate it until this moment where you see it, the sum of string required second parameters. So the way pi.net works, I'm gonna show you in the C++ code. We don't know that this function takes two arguments because we are in Python and in Python, there is no types. I cannot know that this has two arguments because you see, this is how it works. Um, if I look at the include, sorry, it's gonna be actually in source. Yeah, this is a long source. So I have those action proxies. Uh, this is for void functions. This is for the functions. So it, they return some result. And in my case, I will be expecting this function, right? For this type of, uh, however, uh, the function that I am actually producing is this function because select takes function with one argument and not two. So I need to turn the function into a function um, with one argument. So I need to make this Rust function a function with one argument. Well, I can do that easily. I can, for example, where is the result? I can, for example, turn into Lambda. Yes, I'm just using Lambda now. I'm just saying X plus one and X and one, okay? And now this should work. Now, this is pretty funny because what I'm doing here, I have this is a .NET object. This is .NET extension method. This is generic .NET extension method. This is generic parameter types specialization for this method. Okay. This is a call of this generic specialized methods for these types. This is Python, Python Lambda, which is wrapped with this invoke here. And this invoke is invoking into pi object, which is wrapping this Rust function. <laughs> this is fantastic. I'm doing Rust from .NET via pi.net. Now, you may wonder what is the performance of that, right? Because Rust is native, .NET is native-ish code because, you know, JIT will JIT it. And in the middle, there is this Python, ugly Python, you know? And how do we make it more performant? Um, we would have to <laughs> remove Python from the, you know, from the whole equation. But that would be, you know, a different story, a different topic. And uh, yeah, there is person who tried to achieve that by uh, using uh, .NET. Uh, there is core core RT, 
you can use experimental microsoft library which allows you to um, export some uh, functions from .NET natively and then you can using ffi import that in rust but um yeah this this is just full flexibility right this is a, like the only like a compile time thing you have to do unfortunately is those annotations in your Rust code but they aren't so heavy they aren't so painful you know they aren't so painful so this is good now um i can imagine that you know if i can call to Rust, i can pass to Rust whatever python context and then i can just run whole program in Rust and have callbacks into python as they call back to .NET. I can have that as well, right? I'm just gonna have a fun with this a little bit more. So let me just do the results again, but this time I'm gonna just use um, A and B. I'm gonna use, instead of select, I'm gonna use aggregate. Now aggregate, I don't remember actually the, the what's the aggregate, so let's do help. We can actually Google it if you want to, maybe it's better. <laughs> Numbers, aggregate. Okay, so there is aggregate function somewhere and there is three of them. So that will be difficult because my uh, overload selector, like this is, this is extension method, this is generic method and it has three overloads. Sounds crazy. So let's see what template parameters it might have. Input. So that's going to be o int 32 and then the output going to be string. Yeah, that's correct. So that means I can use this function with the seed string function that takes string and o int and returns a string. Everything clear. It's not a very useful function. Why would you sum things as string? Now int a and the second parameter is x. I feel like this should work. What happened here? I know what happened. We forgot to initialize it with empty string. And this empty string is actually not supposed to be empty because we're turning it in, into integer. Well, ah, not in lambda. Where did I put it? Wrong place. We need to put it here before lambda. All right. Because result is a string and it's 15. We forgot that we aggregated. Right, so we summed up all the numbers in the numbers. We just summed them up, right? And it's 15 apparently to according to this formula here. It's it's five, four, and, and six. 15. So it's correct. Can I can I change this root code to something more useful? Um, my data, I guess, really know, and I don't exactly know what will be more useful. What I'm gonna return you size, you size is not gonna be, you know, my, uh, the only thing I'm gonna do here is gonna instead of this int, I'm gonna have something else. I need to think of oh, a predicate, maybe let's let's create a predicate. Why not? So, something like even number is even, no, is even. So, I just want to say a divisible by two, that's it, that's my that's my roost right now here that's my expression and I want to make it by function and I want to add this function to my module is even what's m m is a module okay so that means I'll add it to this module at the top level all right so we have this is even let's try this unfortunately we have to quit Python and we need to use this thing to build right Now, remember, now I didn't do the seamless thing. So what I need to do, I need to do like add assemblies. So um, actually I can import from system. Now import example, example is even that works. And uh, yeah, so list of int 32, that's my numbers. And there is 20 of them, you see, from one to 19. And uh, it's actually 19 numbers. And now we're gonna use the find all method. Guess what we're gonna do? We're just gonna pass find even from our Rust. 
worked. We just called the Rust method from .NET as a predicate. It's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, guys, look at this. I'm gonna do something crazy. I'm gonna create a function and I call it call me. It will return pi result with pi object. Okay. But here it will take pi Python and it will take f, which is pi object. And now here I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna f call pi and I put some argument from Rust, say some number, and I'm gonna use this annotation to this call me okay and voila we are calling a function in python from rust from a function that was called from python let's see if that works so i saved it i'm gonna call this okay we need to say that it is int 32 it works now so as you can expect the results will be on you can delete them these are the results so what happened here what happened here was that i called an extension method on dotnet list this is the dotnet extension method uh, I need to pass here the in32, the specialization, and then um, yeah, I pass the lambda with the all right, let's see how this works. Where is Python? Here's Python. Okay. Import example. Okie dokie. Let's see what will happen if I call example call me with some lambda we're gonna say two times x it's a 20 so twice x is a function that we pass to call me call me takes a pi object it calls it with 10 so twice 10 is 20 so that's what is happening so we're calling from python into call me and then call me calls to python to lambda and then that lambda returns and then the return value is you know return to rust and rust returns to, to python so we have these jumps but now we're gonna do something crazier because this isn't crazy enough i'm gonna just import my favorite dotnet simless and i'm gonna load link import link guess what i'm gonna do i'm gonna call from python a method in .NET, that method in .NET expects a predicate, it will be predicate in Python, which will call into function in Rust, which will then return a value, and then Python will return value to .NET, and then .NET will give me results. So it's gonna be a glue between .NET, Python, and Rust all together, mixed, you know, in a crazy way. It's possible. So we're gonna reuse the same function call me. We just need some, some, some numbers to be, you know, defined. Let me define some numbers. Okay. Now I can show you two things. First of all, I can show you find all. So if I call numbers, find all, and then for each element x in this numbers, I want to do well, what I want to do, example. Okay. And here I'm going to call call me. And that function requires lambda in Python. Let's give it a z. And now I say when x is less than z, okay, and it is close find all. Here we go. We have all the numbers that are less than z, and the z is passed from call me, and call me passes 10 in this case. What we can do next? We can use link. And if we want to use link, we just use here where. Oh, here we go. That's a where, and where takes exactly the same predicate. It's just going to do it in iterative fashion. And I can call it results. And now I can go over results using this comprehension. 
Oh, here we go, same results. The only difference is that now the where returns an iterator. So result is an iterator and we can go one by one as opposed to just receiving a list from find all. It's just that find all is a method of the list and a where is an extension method, a generic extension method of the list of an innumerable. So we have shown that we can actually have a callback um, from Roost to Python. So that's pretty cool. Um, and we can call .NET method via this callback, right? Um, so let, let's, for instance, see uh, if we can go the other way. Like, I would like to pass to this example call me something from .NET. Why not? Why not to make Roost call .NET method, right? Right now, .NET was calling Roost. So this is .NET calling Roost. But let's do it the other way around. Let's Roost call some .NET. Why not? So let's do it this way. Example, call me. So that's Roost, right? And now make it call .NET. But we need, we need to pass to the call me a function. It needs to take some parameter. And we need to do something with this parameter. And we can as well put it here. I can just add to Z, right? It's 200. So you see what happened. I'm calling from Python a uh, Roost function, and that Roost function is calling pi object, um, you know, calling back with argument 10. This argument 10 is substituting Z, and the function is doing this. So it, do, it runs .NET method aggregate with so Z here as a parameter, and then, you know, aggregate gets some, you know, lambda here. We can actually put z inside the, the lambda y scale by z. So and we start from maybe zero. So zero. So this will be sum of all elements of the numbers scaled by z. Oh, and that's the sum of all elements um, scaled by z, right? We can make roost call into the net and so on. So that's pretty cool. What that gives us? Um, Maybe there is some super efficient library in Roost that you want to use. It's a little, you know, native language. It's type safe whatsoever. It's very beautiful language, so it's nice to type in it. And then, you know, uh, maybe it is some, you want to write here a callback. Maybe some, some .NET has some nice UI. So you can, you can actually use this, uh, you know, nice .NET stuff using uh, PyDotNet. You can just load any assembly and import from that assembly any class from .NET. And then you see, you can use that .NET class in Python, but because Python is a language that has a lot of bindings for different other languages, we can glue all these languages together into one thing, you know? So I just experimented here with the Rust and .NET together in the way I'm in Python interpreter. So the, the power of C Python as opposed to like Iron Python or Python interpreter in Rust, those Pythons, you know, they are specific for the environment. They're specific like the one implemented in Rust will not be able to use my .NET module. The one implemented in Iron Python will not be able to use the Rust uh, exports, right? So if you want to have full interoperation, then you need to use C Python, which is, you know, C Python allows you to use module my my.net module to, to interoperate with .net. It allows you to use Py uh, O3 to interoperate with Rust. There is bindings for Python uh, for many languages. So I haven't tried uh, the methods. So you could get the fine struct and let's call it a bar struct. Like I like full bar because. When you don't have idea of how to call something, full bar is perfect, right? Let's call it pi class. And in this pi class, we can store some something, right? So I don't know, we can store this pi object. And we can say, let's call it a callback. Okay, let's call it a callback. And let's say in this class, we have some value here. Um, Roost really um, doesn't not so let, let's say we have some value here, some maybe some x, that is an i32, okay? And now, um, you know, I'm gonna implement this bar. So I'm gonna do input bar, 
and in this bar I'm gonna define a fun function and maybe I wanna have a new now in in case of uh, new functions if I wanna export it to uh, Python there is a way of doing it some gadget is Py class we can have properties things like this say pi methods on those things and we say new and it's just returning self okay we can do that and then uh, new okay and when i do that i can now do uh, self dot callback call say with parameter we need to pass the pi here extract and we're gonna extract uh, i32 so i can say uh, return what let's say the, the result if result 2 is less than self cutoff oh that's our expression and that is an okay we're returning an okay here oh something like that i don't know that needs to be put into a tuple now it will be nice all right so we have a struct a bar that will be export to python we will be able to create an instance of the struct in python so that's where we will create a roost object in from python and then we call a method and that will call back into python and we use that with .NET as well so that's interesting it's a type we just do it this way that's it all done perfect this, this is even better than this this is this is very neat i'd say this is very nice okay um let's let's compile this let's see if i can make a bar in python let's see what that will give me It all boils down to the fact that Python is the most powerful thing on the planet. If there was a god, it would be Python. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rust. Python is just owning you right now. And it's true, Python in this in this particular place, right now I'm just loaded the Rust stuff into Python. So, so it owns it. It's, it owns the, the, the Python is the overlord of this situation. And if I do import .NET seamless, then Python is now overload of both Rust and .NET. You know, it has a lot to manage like things around. So let's try example bar. We should have that one. Okay. And uh, we should have some function here to call some Lambda. Some Lambda that takes some integer and say it takes a square of it. Okay, that's my Lambda. Um, and some cutoff point. Let's put 10. That's my other parameters. I was going to say let. Sonia, we are not in Rust. Rust is here. <laughs> this is Python. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's a bar. Perfect. And now we can notify bar. And actually, this, this notify could also take a function as a parameter. So we can, we can combine things in many ways. Bar, notify, and we need a parameter oh, false square of 5 is 25 so it's not less than 10 square of 2 is going to be true because it's less than 5, 10 right so so that's cool how about we do some again dot net stuff right so yeah so now we need to import system link and we can create this bar again with some lambda but we're gonna do it this way we can create a list here why not of int32s from list of range of x now i can do aggregate all right so we have a bar notify and let's generate numbers up to 30 So what this is doing now is we have a class in Roost exposed to Python 
constructed from lambda um, in Python, a lambda that is calling .NET function, but this lambda will be called later, so I'm storing this lambda. I'm storing it in here, in this callback. And then when I call notify, this is going to be called when I'm calling notify. And this then ends up in this cutoff. So what happens effectively is I'm calling notify with argument one, meaning that I'm creating here, I'm calling this lambda, right? A list, a dot .NET list with the values in range of one, which would be just a list with one element one. Then aggregate all those numbers on this list using this lambda, uh, adding them all up together, up to zero. And then all of that uh, gets, you know, the result goes here. And then the next thing is this. The question is, is the result less than the cutoff? So we set cutoff to be 10. And in this case, the result is less than 10. And in this case, it's not less because 30, you know, if you sum all the numbers of up to 30, it's going to be more than 10. So that's pretty cool. And we have experimented, I think, with many things here right now. So we have simple functions in Rust. We have a function taking a callback into Python. We have a class. We have a constructor that takes a callback. And I call this callback later on. And yeah, extraction into native Rust types from, from Python. So, so yeah, we go all the way here. Have all the all the possibilities, and you see this callback because I have Py.NET, uh, you know, module. I can call .NET function. So effectively, it boils down for like my Rust code is calling .NET functions, and .NET functions are calling my Rust code, and it just happens to happen, <laughs> and it's easy peasy. I don't need to do much. I can call my code Rust code from Python. I can call my Rust code from .NET. I can call my .NET code from Rust. How about I write my own class in .NET using Python value get set public int and notify. Now we can do you know load assemblies. import uh, foo2 and now foo2 has a bar which we can create and set value so let's create some bar okay and um, we can have bar1 which is example dot bar and here we need a lambda so this lambda will be taking an int and returning an int. Look at this. We have one like this. We can just do bar two notify. This is gonna even work like right yeah. I'm just passing a dot net method. And let's say 20. Doesn't crash. <laughs> bar one notify. Let's see if that crashes. So we're gonna say 10 plus the value is less than 20. So 10 plus Five is gonna be less than it's gonna be less, yes, true. Ten plus ten plus ten is not gonna be less. If I set the value to one hundred, it's gonna be false. So you see that I'm just showing you that um, I'm updating this object, changing the object, mutating it, it's changing the value in the .NET object. This .NET object is bounded with this notify method. So this this is like like. Um, so this is the Roost, Roost class. Into this Roost class, I'm passing closure. This closure contains this object, the .NET object, and the method. And when, I, and when I'm changing this object, you know, then when I call the notify on the Roost object, the Roost object calls back to this method, but this method is bound to this object. So if I change this object, it's obviously, you know, you get a new result. So you have like nice... So I showed you how we can uh, create a class in Python, well, using, using C-sharp source code, and use that to 
to to to to call it back to to roost you know roost can use that then like this so that's pretty pretty crazy stuff you can do with this pi.net i think pi.net is like too much power in hands of mine so if you want to use pandas and numpy um then you know then c python is how you can do it and the fact that you can now marry those together um yeah it's i think it's amazing so pi.net again this is fantastic all right i guess thanks for watching and i suppose i'm gonna i'm gonna finish now <laughs>